Hey there, welcome to another episode of Inside the Women of Denver. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and I'm so excited about this episode because you are gonna learn incredible tips for increasing confidence, becoming a social media boss, and even avoiding harsh chemicals in the products you use every day. First up, are you giving mixed messages? We've got a communications expert here to help you communicate for clarity. I'm here with Alicia Cuello, and she's gonna talk with us about mixed messages women give that undermine our credibility and how to communicate more effectively as a leader you know you are. So Alicia, tell yes. me about some of these mixed messages you're talking about. Well, as I've worked with people on their body language skills, what I've noticed is a lot of women give mixed messages. Mm -hmm. And the really interesting thing is it's subconscious. So most yeah. of the time, they don't even realize they're doing it. Oh, wow. The other piece that comes into play is that women are so demonstrative, we don't realize how we're coming across. So okay. when you put those two together, it actually undermines your credibility because we mm -hmm. inadvertently give mixed messages. So what does demonstrative mean as far as women go? Uh, we're very, very expressive with our hands, yes. with our face, with our <laughs> body movements. Uh -huh. And if you watch men, they're much more controlled, much more quiet. Okay. And so when women become really demonstrative and it doesn't match their um, their message, it actually undermines their credibility. Mm -hmm. So what I'm talking about is when you go into a, a room and you say, you, you come across very assertive and you say, you know, I don't agree with that point. Yes. But then you follow up with kind of a giggle. We Oh, do the, yeah, that, yeah. I've done that so many times, that awkward giggle, like you're not sure. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So what happens is we're actually hardwired to believe your body language. Okay. So when you're giggling or when you're smiling because you're giving something serious, um, people tend to go with your body language and think she's not serious about what she's saying. Yes. And it actually diminishes your credibility in the boardroom, if you will. Okay. So... Let's say a woman wants to, you know, become more assertive or just kind of come into her power in her own way. The assertive can sometimes be a strong word for some people. Right. But what, is, what are some of the keys to avoid some of those mixed messages? Make sure that you show up with your power and then don't apologize afterwards. Exactly. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. I watch women, they'll come in and they'll say what they want and they'll say, I'm sorry, but. Uh -huh. And in my head, I'm thinking, stop apologizing. Yes. So what you want to do is you want to walk in a room with the right attitude, which is, you know what? I'm here to own what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to walk in the room with confidence. So you're going to be big. Confident yes. people come in big. Right. And then when you sit down and you start talking, you really need to pay attention to what's going on with your face and your mannerisms. And that takes mm -hmm. practice. That's not something that most people can do overnight because as women, we're conditioned to be more um, demure right. and more playing towards the men. So if I tell you something and you're a man, I might do something like... <laughs> Oh Yeah, and kind of look down. <laughs> and it's just, we're conditioned that way because in, in the corporate world, oh. it's unfortunate, but we don't want to be labeled as being a bitch. And so assertive women who don't add that feminine touch right. get labeled as being a bitch. So there's a balance there. You can walk in, be big, be aware of what's going on with your face. So if you're giving some hard um, information, mm -hmm. make sure you're smiling when it's appropriate, but not smiling when it's not appropriate. Yes. So like, I deserve this contract for the following reasons. Don't stand there and smile because it actually undermines your credibility. You yeah. need to be serious with them. One of my favorite books, The Charisma Myth, yes. she talks a lot about that. And she talk, I think she referred to it, and I'm paraphrasing probably, but she referred to it as smiling with intention. Yep. So don't just walk around smiling at everybody. People think you give it out to everybody that you see, but when you smile with intention, it's a power move. Exactly. And so we've been conditioned as women to smile all the time, mm -hmm. to lessen the impact. Yes. And it just diminishes our credibility. So smile when it's appropriate, mm -hmm. and then don't smile when it's not appropriate. Okay. And if you need some cues, look around the room and see what are other people doing in the room at that moment. Right. And if they're not smiling, maybe you shouldn't be smiling. So okay. that's my suggestion. What's okay. one quick tip that women can take to the boardroom to really succeed and be the boss they know they really are? Uh, so two things, walk in with presence, so be mm -hmm. big. And also when you sit down, make sure your chair is level with everybody else. Oh, good one. Or yeah. <laughs> slightly higher. 
because when you walk in and your chair is actually lower than everyone else's, mm -hmm. it comes across as you being um, less powerful because yes. people are literally talking down to you. Mm -hmm. So always check out your seat when you walk in. Nice, yeah. great tips, Alicia. Nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Wow, communication is so important. But you know what else is important? Knowing what we're putting on our skin, one of the most important but neglected organs. Ann K. Ming, our ingredient detective, is here to share more tips for toxic-free living. Last time, she told us about what fragrance means on a product label. This time, we're learning about something called PEGs. Oh my gosh, last time you were here, you totally blew me away with knowledge. So I need to know, what is a PEG and why should I be avoiding yeah. it? <laughs> well, I'm so glad I get to be here again to yes. share another ingredient with you. And today is PEGs. So okay. PEG is otherwise known as polyethylene glycol. That does not sound like something I want on my face. Well, and it's not necessarily that it's bad up front, right? Uh -huh. um, but it goes through this process where it's mixed with, it's a petroleum based product and it's myth mixed with ethylene glycol. And um, often these PEGs are contaminated. Okay. So they've done studies where they tested over a hundred different natural or organic products. Yeah. And 46% came back contaminated with mm. either 1,4-dioxane, which is a known human carcinogen, or ethylene oxide. Okay. Ethylene oxide is actually what antifreeze is. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> so PEGs are used for so many different things. From our personal care to cosmetic products, it's used in industrial um, uh, manufacturing, it's okay. used in medicine. Um, some of the fun uses that I've found out are, it is what they fill paintballs with. Oh! Um, so that's kind of interesting. Things. <laughs> and uh, it's very fascinating that they actually, um, Archaeologists use PEGs to preserve artifacts that they unearth. Really? So if you think about that, we're putting that on our skin, which is our largest organ. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons that manufacturers use PEGs, not only is it more cost effective, um, but it's known to enhance the penetration of other ingredients in the product. Okay. So a PEG necessarily by itself isn't necessary necessarily bad it could right. be contaminated but if it's in the presence of other harmful ingredients then it's it making it those go. penetrate even yeah further. okay so I see that it sounds like they put it in there for a good reason to help make the product penetrate better but then it could also cause harmful things to get deeper into our skin yeah and okay. for 50 percent of the time the PEGs are contaminated with a known carcinogen. Yeah. And there is an easy, and it's not necessarily expensive way to strip the products of these carcinogens, mm -hmm. but because the FDA has zero regulation over our personal care product industry, yeah. they don't, we don't, consumers don't necessarily know when the PEGs are safe or not oh, safe. Oh, I get that. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I feel so very enlightened. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing that information about PEGs. I'm going to process that. <laughs> and, you know, I can't wait till the next time. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Thanks, Ann. Now, I know you feel compelled to go check all the labels in your bathroom, but stick around a while because our next guest has a unique perspective on social media that you're really going to want to hear. Who says you can't build real communities on social media? Digital marketing expert Helene Kwong is here to talk about building and maintaining authentic communities in the online world. So, online communities are totally real, right? <laughs> they're real, yeah. <laughs> but so many businesses go around, go about it the wrong way. You know, they're doing yeah. the automation tools. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, that's easy. I can just schedule all this stuff out and, you know, basically like, forget about it. Just but, you know, the three C's of being, you know, content consistency, community. Community yes. is the most important, even though it's the third one. Because yes. without it, for a brick and mortar business, you know, you're in person, if you don't have a community around your business, like it can be transactional. It can be like, okay, yeah. I got a sale here, I got a sale there. But after a while people are gonna be like, well, what makes you guys different from the big chain down the street? Right. You know, so it's the same thing with online communities. It's like, if you're not connecting with the people, and I feel like a lot of businesses, they think of it as being more, they think of social media like it's just a online extension. Announcements. Yeah, announcements, yeah. online extension of, TV, radio, all the traditional yes. marketing out there. But it's like, 
it's definitely not that. You can have a two-way conversation with your customers and clients. And they want that. Yeah, they want that. Because like, even for me as a consumer, like when I reach out to especially a local business and mm -hmm. they don't respond, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I feel yeah. sad. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, they're all about talking about the, you know, they're about community and all that stuff. And yes. then they don't follow through with it to where it's like, oh, okay. Well. I get so excited when my favorite brands uh -huh. share my like will retweet yeah. something like if I take a picture of my food oh, and yeah. I you know and they retweet it I'm like oh my god they did or they, even if they like, respond yeah. to you especially right. when they do that you're like oh <laughs> I exist <laughs> right I've had some really fun conversations with um, like there's this bee bee vomit honey company oh, okay I'm like what's going on <laughs> yeah and I remember having this funny conversation with somebody where we shared an article about uh -huh. um, how honey is bee vomit uh -huh. and they started in our conversation they joined uh -huh. in the conversation they were like it really is see <laughs> yeah hey well i mean right there it just builds credibility for their business too to where yeah. it's like you know you're not just making up stuff and they're not just standing behind being silent and be like yeah sure just keep right. doing that you know kind of thing <laughs> they're like yeah they're participating in it as a person but like you know as an entity itself to where it's like you have a voice yeah as a business online you know you do have a voice to where it's like you got to talk with people, but you also got to make sure that, you know, when they ask you questions, you respond. Not mm -hmm. so much about, oh, hey, next special here and next special there yes. and, oh, come to our event kind of thing. It's like, it's not so much about the broadcasting. So, I yeah. mean, that's part of it. It's just that you need to make sure that you're having the conversation to build your thriving online community. And then in the end, it's like, yeah, you might have 500 followers, but they're 500 engaged followers, yes. you know, versus a million followers who don't even know who you, that you exist. They're right. like based in other countries, they're never gonna buy from you. They're just like auto liking everything, auto commenting, this is great. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's not authentic. So it's all about authenticity. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I feel like the online world is, it's very different than any other type of advertising. And I feel like you can't really look at it as advertising mm -hmm. if you wanna be successful with it. Yeah. You have to really view it as something different, as more of a relationship, you know, customer relationship. Mm -hmm management or customer relationship building platform versus looking at it like an advertising platform. Yeah, it's all about the storytelling. I mean, it's just about just being real. It's like people are trying to put up that front of being like, I'm like this, or you know, the businesses are being like, I'm like this. But if mm -hmm. they're just, they're not telling a compelling story, people don't, people you know, don't after care. a while, they're just like, okay, I'm gonna go on to the next coffee shop or mm -hmm. the next whatever, you know? Yeah. So what's your favorite tip for um, businesses, small or large, that mm -hmm. wanna start really cultivating a community for their business on social media? Well, I mean, I guess especially for uh, Twitter, but you can do it on Instagram and the other networks as well, is that, you know, just think of what you wanna listen for as a business. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Twitter and Instagram have the hash hashtags and stuff. So, you know, yes. listen for, or, you know, put up search terms for people, for, you know, terms that basically people would search for for your business. So mm -hmm. for example, a pizza company, if people are like, I'm hungry, or they use the pizza emoji, you know, you can, you know, see what they're talking about with their uh. friends through that, or you could just even pop in and be like, hey, you want pizza? We're down the street from you. I mean, that's, that gets a little borderline salesy, but yes, to where but it's, it's still like- still cute. <laughs> it's still cute, and it's also, you're being a little more proactive yes. in that way to where you're not waiting for them to come to you. Right, so where, how do people start doing that? Is it just like going to Twitter and searching, or a tool? You can go through Twitter and search. You can also use TweetDeck, which is owned by Twitter. Okay. Um, of course, you know, that's more than what we can talk about on this yes. show, but you know, if people <laughs> want to reach out, out to us, and talk about it and just have me do a tutorial, I can do that. You know? Okay, awesome. Yeah, I know you do lots of workshops and things like that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Helene, for those amazing tips and uh, helping people to understand the importance of building communities on social. Of course, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Before you hop online to start working on your social media game, let's get centered first. Our next guest knows the secret to living a centered and powerful life, and she's here to share it with you so you can reach your ultimate potential. I'm here with Tracy Ravel, who's gonna share how you can tap into your intuition to find personal power and confidence from within. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, what a beautiful way to start. <laughs> Thank Makes you. Makes me think of the next Karate Kid. It was like one of my favorite movies. And when she went to go do the big jump, she always got down. Cool. And then she'd leap up. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna define intuition. Okay. So people throw that word around. I really don't totally understand what it means. So pr explain what that means to us and then we'll start, um, we'll move a little forward from there. Okay, explain intuition. Um, 
intuition, I believe, is knowing what you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we all get information different ways. And I guess at its base, it's knowing what you know mm -hmm. and trusting that. Okay. So how do we tap into, so basically there was a time I was, I remember coming to you, I was super stressed out and you had me do some different things. I can't remember all of what it was, but it made me feel like I was more present mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I was like, you were asking me to just give you answers. Mm -hmm. Like it was coming from somewhere. So mm -hmm. tell me, you know, how do we use <laughs> techniques like that to tap into our intuition and really kind of find those answers for ourselves? So first of all, as women, we are hardwired to know what we know in our bodies, mm -hmm. to connect with source, if you will, with okay. ourselves, and to know what we know in our bodies. So I had somebody actually, I've been doing a lot of learning recently, and I had somebody actually say, what you do is not woo-woo at all, it's really just science. Oh, wow. Science is information gathering uh -huh. and data um, interpreting, if you will, so what I do with people is I really have you set up like a clear channel. Like uh -huh. I had you do. So go ahead and set up. <laughs> Head over chest over pelvis and connect down and connect up and out and bring all of you into you and ask a question mm -hmm. and ask your body and ask yourself and it will tell you and you will get a clear, I know what I know if you listen. Okay. So going back to the data gathering and the scientific, literally thoughts are like electrical impulses in your body uh -huh. and emotions are hormones, basically a chemical. Oh. So when thoughts and chemicals come together, it's literally a chemical reaction in your body. Uh -huh. And we can interpret that within our nervous system, literally, uh -huh. mind, body, emotion, and spirit and we can shift it and change it according to knowing what we know yeah. and just interpreting that and, and, and listening to it. Most of the time we ignore what we get. Mm -hmm. It's easy because even if I'm hungry, my body's like, I'm hungry and I'm like, no, you're not. Right. We have to go. Right. So we get, it's almost like my body is, tr I'm trained to not listen to my body. Right, yeah. And, and it's, it's very, it's almost honored in this culture Mm -hmm. to not listen to it and just to keep going and to go, keep go, driving. Go. Yes. And so that's, I talk about the feminine a lot. That's the feminine, mm -hmm. the listening, the honoring, the intuition. Yeah. Yeah, the being present with that and coming from that inside strong centered power instead of the outside force. So you take mm. this <laughs> and you take it out into the action and the direction. Okay. That's where you rock your life. You start coming from that real, true, confident within yourself mm -hmm. space. Okay. So what is <laughs> one thing that our viewers can do today that will help them to take the first step towards paying more attention to their intuition and listening to their body and not doing that thing where we just go, go, go and ignore everything that we're feeling? My favorite thing that you see me do all the time, the shoulder blade squeezes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. Letting your shoulder blades drop back and down and opening this space, mm -hmm. heart center, right? Uh -huh. And opening this and literally letting those guys pull back and down. Okay, I don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually call these the confidence muscles. Okay. <laughs> so opening that and really noticing this, feeling from this space, mm -hmm. most of us are like this all the time. Yes. And shut down. Right? And so that opens you up to really drop into the heart center, listen to yourself. Okay. Know what you know, feel what you feel. Perfect. And even that action just kind of, it makes you have to think because it's not totally. usual. So just thinking differently will maybe get you to kind of be present in the moment for a exactly. second. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it literally will rewire <laughs> you to be in your body, which is being present. Okay. When you learn how to rewire mind and body, mm -hmm. you can learn how to rewire mind, you can learn how to rewire a mental and bring all of it together with the spirit. So. Oh, beautiful. Well, with that, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Tracy. <laughs> thank you. I hope you enjoyed our expert guests as much as I did. 
I can't wait to see you again for our next episode of Inside the Women of Denver. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.